Saturday. So they're looking to have a bit of a better showing as well to make sure that they're avoiding the promotion tournament at the end of the season. We're going to be seeing a Yumi getting taken off the board. It's not necessarily the enchantment we've been seeing a lot of on this patch. Normally you see the Karma getting taken away, but slight adaptation from then in response. We're seeing some typical red side bans. Uh, Lucian being taken off the table. The Talia, they don't want to see that being picked up potentially. Gwen in response as well. Okay, so uh, we, we're sort of missing a couple of the jungles that I was necessarily expecting to see get banned away. Uh, the, the Wukong still very much prevalent and available. The Gwen taken off the board. Talia, Lucian also out of the mix. So Wukong seems like your natural go-to. Memento probably likely to go for either a Lilia or a Viego in response. Lilia is sort of touted as this Wukong answer, particularly with her pickups in this cat patch as well. Looks like a completely different champion from 12-9 to 12-10. Senna TK here, this surely. Counter. You would like to see it. I think Senna TK is a very good bot lane right now. I don't know that there's anything that quite matches it. Early game or late game, I think that Senna is premier, just top tier. Yeah, absolutely. I would expect them to at least take the center here. Obviously, the S plus tier pick on the patch, I believe. Just to see whether they opt into it. They actually go Orn and Rakan. Not a massive fan of this from LDLC, to be honest with you. Now, in fairness, Exekick hasn't hasn't shown to be the type that would want to play center. Does tend to opt more around the the hyper carries. You know, the center can be that later on, but doesn't have that same or has a little bit more utility earlier on. Honestly, definitely has a different play style and one that. I've not seen yet utilized by extra kick. We'll have to see if that one comes through or not. But Orangian instantly taking this on, or this Yone rather, this could well be a matchup into the top lane, or it's just an incredibly bold blind into the mid lane. There are a, a lot of different picks that they can go for a ban here. I'd like to see them get rid of the Zaya uh, if they want to get rid of that pairing with Zaya Khan. But I, I, I am excited by this Yone because I don't know where it fits. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where the Yone slots into this. I kind of zoned out for a second there just because I am very impressed to be seeing this Yone. It's something that we see paired up with the Lilia quite often. Seen in an NLC for a few times, for example. But I'm still quite getting used to it. It's kind of something that's coming back into the meta more. Obviously, Yone was a champion previously where it had problems due to having a lot of losing lanes. Now, I think that's been something that's changed slightly in the fact that it has obviously that added resistances at early health as well. You see Nara and Camille getting off the table here, so they're trying to get get some of Bad Lulu's champion pool potentially taking away some of these safe blinds. Right. Just... I would have loved to see just flex Lilia. Let's take a jungler here uh, because Lilia into Orn, a very good matchup. Uh, Orn doesn't do very well versus Lilia. Tanks in general don't. Uh, and, you know, yes, you've got this fairly nice ADAP jungle mid lane matchup that you've got if you do go Memento with Lilia, but right here, I really like the idea of flexing your Lilia and making a bit more of a statement with the pick. Turns out that they just go against the grain. Uh, they, they're going to keep that Lilia in the jungle, keep her in a more traditional position. Sion comes through as the answer, so this is going to be a very boring top lane by all accounts. Orn versus Sion, never expect it to be the most entertaining thing. Callista is the answer for Exekick, getting that early game prevalence. And, you know, whenever you lock an awning on that top side, you'd like to see a strong-sided bot lane. Callista Rakan is exactly that. Yeah, and here's where Mirage cements their draft they've played for this r5 support counter pick what answer do you have to the callista rakana it's got to be something that's able to stop this Nasus. callista from taking over the game norless not, not exactly quite. your r5 centerpiece pulling it all together the hairpin <laughs> of the draft i'm not entirely sure what the point of reserving the counter pick for support was if you were going to just opt into this i don't think it's the worst in the world but yeah what are we thinking about this draft mr rude dude uh, R5 Nautilus, never, never what I want to see. I'll let teams know that right now. It's, it's ne uh, unless, and I think in this draft specifically, when you saw Rakan so early, uh, I think that you could have probably opted into taking Nautilus a little bit earlier on. But what they did do is, is pick this Nautilus into a Callista, and it, and it is a very good matchup, right? Due to you press R, Callista is going to get CC'd at some point. It means that she can't just, you know, cleanse away, get rid of the, the, sp the, the CC or what have you, it makes it difficult for that martial poise to really start to take off in team fights. You can sort of kite away from it as best as possible, but there is always that impending doom of CC that's going to hit you. So the, the, the pick itself isn't bad, it's just not what we would have liked to have seen on five. And I do think that they yeah. kind of ruin side opportunities by taking out all of their flex picks really early on um, uh, and getting rid of you know all of the, the mystery, I suppose, to their composition.
I wanted to ask you something because you mentioned that this Lilia is a pick that is seen as an answer to Wukong. Mm. Is that something that you just know to be ontologically true, or do you have any so, so reasoning behind why that is the case? I really like the mobility aspect of a Lilia, right? You can kind of dance around the Wukong for the most part. He dashes onto you, mm. but you can kind of just move speed away uh, for the most part. And then also when he goes into the clone, if you've hit him with any ability, the clone doesn't really do anything because you always get the uh, the damage over time proccing, which goes, shows the little shimmer as to where the Wukong is. It's not particularly uh, you know, a, a mystery, I suppose, as to where the clone has gone or if the clone is being used. We may well get to see that fairly shown off. How does this 2v2 play out for Mirage versus LDLC in this game? Because you've got the Lily, you've got the Yone. There's a lot of synergy there in terms of how easily they can keep a, a opponent rooted, for example. But how do they stack up against an Azir and a Wukong, for example? I think fairly early on, they probably have the run of things. Azir, not the champion known for his early game dominance. Potentially in the laning phase, he has a bit of bully potential on the Yone. But I think that you're expecting Lilia and the Yone to maybe have that dueling power. And then at level six, it really does not necessarily change again, but it becomes a lot more volatile. We're going to have to wait and see, though. Uh, game number two is ready to get going. We're going to hop onto the Rift for this one right now. Back on to the Rift now for game number two of the day. And we're actually going to get a straight up start. We're not a minute in this time. We've not gone into the future route, dude. We are here. We're in time to stop what is about to happen, potentially. How do you yeah. feel about that? We are present and we are ready. Very nice little opening, I think, for Mirage. Just looking to use this Scion and Nautilus. Try and establish some bot lane control and make sure that LDLC's bot lane can't just run off to the races to begin with. I think that this is a... Really good little adaptation for them at level one to make sure that they can put down that early game ward and at least know what Doss and Exekick are up to because you know that they're going to want to try and fight. This Rakan Callista lane can just fight you at level one. They do have a better all in just by product of the champions that they've taken. If they can find the angle onto Cody Sun. He's going to need to either force a summoner spells to be used or just flop immediately. So I uh, would, would like to see... Uh, or, or I'm happy rather to have seen that little bit of presence shown by Mirage. What they didn't do is put a ward down in that bush. Um, and that kind of ruins the illusion for me a little bit. So now they can kind of be, they, they would have been operating with good information about that bot lane, but now they're going to kind of have to guess. Yeah, completely. Um, one of the big takeaways for me for day two of week one, Mirage's game against Carmine Court was how Memento was able to Kind of out tempo and read the map almost. Sorry, the game wasn't against Carmine Corp. It was against uh, BDS Academy. Sorry, my mistake. But against Shio, Memento was able to really read the map and that set up his laners to be able to take advantages. You're playing against Yike. This guy is very cerebral, very omniscient in terms of the map and how it's meant to be played out. Whether or not he can do the same is really a big question for me this game. And in terms of how the matchup plays out, is Lilia a champion that can really start to out tempo the Wukong or can Wukong keep up? I think you can outclear on Lilia. That's certainly something that uh, she has going for her is her clear speed, a very speedy clearer of the jungle. Yike not necessarily going to be able to keep pace with that too highly. Both of them you can see going for a similar clear. So this will be a great little indicator of who's getting to where and when. It looks like the Wukong's pretty much cleared up the same thing as well. So they're actually fairly well paced right now. Uh, and, you know, I think it's entirely wrong here. Wukong's clear speed clearly just... Well, this Who is the does? best thing that's happened all day. I mean, seeing yeah. you being able to be li wrong live mm. on air is just so great. I'm firing on all like uh, all of my like um, happy chemicals are full blaring here. But Lilia is slightly Shuguru. ahead, so yeah, Lilia is slightly ahead. So you know, I've celebrated too early. <laughs> that's on you, honestly. Uh, we'll have yeah, to see no. whether I, I, look like, I look like the idiot now. I'll put the egg back on your face. Uh, the the thing is with these junglers <laughs> is that pre-level six, neither one of them has particularly overwhelming ganks. So that early clear speed doesn't necessarily translate into early priority out on the map. It is more so just how quickly can I clear my camps to start clearing them again uh, and get to that second, third rotation where level six does happen to come through. And you can already see that in this mid lane, we were expecting the early poke to go the Azir's way. This is obviously that issue that Yone does have is that his laning phase is never particularly great. Uh, and quite nicely, we're seeing Aika punish that so 
I want to touch on something. Yike is doing the thing that I get flamed for in solo queue. He's pathing to the tank matchup. Where? Why is he doing so? Can you explain it to me, rude dude? Why is he? Why is he doing the right thing here? I, I, I you know what? I can't explain it. Uh, the, the good thing is that they both He's getting, cross he gets a, he gets a he gets a crab from it and he gets to ward the level two camps, rude dude. That's why. Ah, there you go. There you go. Uh, you know what? They, they, they've done it. They've really, they've really gone and done it this time. Yike, we've cracked, ahead we've of the, cracked curve. the case. You know what? This is why Yike's playing, and I'm not. Exactly. And this is why I can now pretend that I'm ideologically aligned in terms of jungle with one of the best junglers in the RLs. True, true. And, and you, you see, can look I'm at the really doing a very, very good job of making myself look good, and you, you look bad today, rude dude. I, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm here to support you. That's what, that's what we, have, that's what we got to do. Uh, look Thank at that minimap so as well. Like the pings came down immediately. Memento can't go into his jungle with those two wards that got placed uh, because he got immediately pinged out. Those rogues respawn and then immediately pinged out that somebody's there. Ragnar played very nicely, very safely up on that top side since he knew that Memento had one play and it was gank top lane right then. They've got a complete vision of where the Lilia had been and where she was going to go. So good to see the, the wards being paid, uh, the wards having paid off, and then of course utilizing them to get some safe. Are clearing through their full jungle once again. Imagine uh, they're going to go from top to bottom, bot to top alike. This is a really nice trade from Ragnar. He doesn't quite have the cooldowns to be able to look for much more, but he's going to be able to force out on a beneficial wave state here at least. Yeah, nicely done. Just a little, a cheeky little advantage uh, being given over. Can't really discredit too much to Ragnar uh, because you know you're playing this on. You don't have too many options in terms of getting those solo kills pre level six and against a scion you're never really expecting it to go all that all that favorably for you necessarily uh, you do have a nice little bit of health damage but you're never expecting to find the solo kill up against the side raxo might be looking here onto dos dos is just uh doing a little s key shimmy i like to call that there anticipating a potential mm. flash from raxo it never comes out though raxo he had a bit of a stinker in day one did he not but in day two really turned it around at least for me yeah, had has so far been one of the one of the the different set ends of the well played spectrum from game one, okay. game one that they played to game two. Uh, it was like you say, complete detraction from what we saw in day one. His thresh was absolutely insane, uh, and we need to see him return to that form for this matchup specifically. Yeah, completely. I mean, when you talk about coming up against Exa Kick and Dos, one of the stronger bot lanes in the tournament is really the time you need to show, but they are going to be all moving in a four-man unit towards his first dragon. Yike looking to go up into the top lane here. I'm not sure entirely what he's going to be able to get done against the full health sign. He's just going to base in return. Yeah, this this is one of those where if it's Jace, you're like, okay, we're diving. But then you look yeah. at the top lane and you're like, ah, we've stacked the wave, but we can't dive. Unlucky. That's very cheeky from Ragnar there, tries to get the uh, demolish proc for the plate doesn't quite have the damage threshold for it but we're starting to see the proxy orn now which is a new genre of orn that we haven't seen before yeah and, and the funny thing is that both of these laners can proxy waves uh yeah. so you know <laughs> ragnar's doing this to try and get a get a turret plating but bad lulu just goes you can hold a wave congratulations buddy so can i and anything just holds the you wave can do the i can do better says bad lulu yeah, just just he keeps that one out from the turret. That plate is not going down without a complete scrap for it. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it's just going to be that little bit of a mini game up in the top lane. And you know what? When you're playing top lane, you kind of have to you have to generate those for yourself because otherwise you just get very bored. I think you just ha yeah, exactly. It's one of those things, right? You have to do something, otherwise you will literally fall asleep at the wheel that is top lane. And once again, though, what what did come from that? was another good ward into Memento's jungle and one that mm, we haven't really seen yeah. translated. You know, it, it's not really a surprise that the Lily is going to keep power clearing and that both right. of these junglers are sort of matching their top to bot, bot to top styles, but it's good to keep an eye on it and know that it still happens. I actually disagree. I think when we talked about some of the tempo advantages that could be gained by Lilia, we started to see the clear was a lot faster. She was already onto the crab by the time that Yike was still finishing the Gromp. And some of that tempo has really been traded downwards. You see Yike taking these late tempo resets to get that vision. And it slowed, it slowed Memento down to the point where they're now in an equal position, pathing for opposites. That means that Yike is now more enabled to go for this Rift Herald. I wonder if they saw that little cross... Clear, right because at Ooh. this point right you're thinking Rakan's hey, should up be doing here. blue Rakan's here quicker it could mean that Memento finds it very difficult to get into this area Nort is coming around the side here 
Remember, the Jinx has global presence almost with that if they ping level six off of this wave, which they should do. Looks to me to be the case that Mirage has to hand over this Rift Herald. And I spoke about this. Those early wards from Yike in terms of slowing down Lilia's clear means that the side he's pathing for, that's why he pathed the tank versus tank matchup. He gets that Rift Herald and it's going to mean an advantage for all their team. We'll have to see where that, that advantage then is used. Obviously, Memento is going to be able to play his, his, the rest of his camps a little bit faster and he's going to have a little bit of time out on the map where Memento will either, or Yike rather, will either fall behind or have to try and, you know, clear up the camps himself. Thus far, though, uh, it does look like the, the game continues to be fairly slow paced. And whilst we, you know, acknowledge that, it's just to keep your eyes on the gold leads on the scoreboards in that aspect and say that really our only advantage is in the top lane, it looks like. We've got that one plate that looks to have been taken down. I think there's a second one down there as Ooh, well. Oh, Ica Can goes you? in at a moment's notice. Yonalt comes out in response. Ignite is burning down on somebody. He has flashed out there. Ica, the turn of a thread, finds Rangyun there with the Sharima shuffle. Great, great set of events for himself. Back in on a ward. Uh, you know, you use Sharima shuffle, but you do find a flash. So very worthwhile. Ica will be able to rinse and repeat that play in about two minutes time when that ulti comes back up off cooldown. And that's an advantage generated. It's one that hopefully they can look back on uh, and try and find again uh, another set of, another round of leads, another set of cooldowns back in their favor. Momento going for a scrap with the mid laner, but Doss is nearby and that Rift Herald having gone down is going to give a couple plates over. Exit to get some gold as well, which is very nice. But so far with no kills going over, it is just plating the laning differences. At yeah, completely. I mean, obviously we spoke about that top side advantage previously. Ica goes in now, Ranyan with a very nice E to dodge out from Doss there. It means he's going to run away unscathed. But yes, like we said, as we're calming down now, please let nothing happen for a brief second in this game. It's very much the case the game is moving in a static direction. There's only lane advantages being generated by top lane at this very moment. Oh, Slight like CS lead in the mid lane as well. Where does the first point of contention come in this game for you, Rude Dude? Could well be this dragon that's spawning in a couple of seconds, about 30, 40 seconds out on that one. Hopefully we can get the, uh, the, the timers on for accuracy uh, for the remainder. But either way, right, uh, we've got that dragon down on the bot side that could very well be that point of power and when you've just got resets from your mid lane from your ad carry this is about as strong as they're going to look to be for these fights potentially mirage want to go for it right now i mean at this point in laning phase in particular rangun is full build he's got his vamp set too. he's got his tier two boots this yone is ready to throw down yeah absolutely and i think this is the point at which we start to see some of this uh 2v2 you spoke to me in the pre-game of this we were speaking about how the 2v2 is favoured for the Lilio and the Yone, but obviously that comes down to the Azir not being particularly strong. When does the Azir start to really build a lot of aggression in this matchup? Is it near the 11, level 11 mark? Would I be right in saying so? I, I, yeah, I'll give you that. I think that it's more item spike oriented more so than anything else, right? You hit that Leandris, you can start to really deal you know, meaningful chunks. The issue is going to be that we are looking at this Vamps to Rangyun with you need to hit more than just good poke. You need to be sort of, you know, dialing down 30, 40% of your HP, which takes a while to then get sustained back up. But every item that Azir gets is a bit stronger with, right? There's there's no, um, I, I don't, I guess that there's not particularly that level threshold that makes Azir good. It's just every item he gets, he gets way stronger. Yeah, completely on that front. I think an important thing to note now is those two dragons have been built up for Mirage, which means they can build towards this ocean soul wind condition, whether or not, LDLC can trade some of the godly they have to stable, stable, um, stabilize the game in that regard. It is something that we'll have to see in around three minutes or so. But some good signs, at least from Mirage in terms of that win condition. Do you think it's possible they can build on it? Yeah, yeah, I really do. Uh, they, they do have, you know, really good late game team fighting. Let's not let's not beat about the bush here. They've got Jinx, Yone, Lilia, which are very scary late game team fighters. The the Callista, a champion which you know I think gets a bit of a rep for being a only early game focus champion. I think that on this patch and you know, with the new items that came in, uh, there's a a lot more late game power that comes to a Callista than people necessarily lend credence to. Obviously, not to the extent that a Jinx is going to be able to, you know, that, that, that they're going to be able to match a Jinx, excuse me. But still, Exekick will have agency in the late game. And uh, Ica, of course, on this Azir, has range that pretty much parallels a Jinx if played correctly. Completely and utterly agree with you in that regard mr rude dude we're gonna be moving into the boss side jungle here to clear out some of this vision 
Jack has reached that Divine Sundra. A lot of Lucidity boos we're seeing. Lily has that Lucidity boost. I suppose it's an item, you generally speaking. Do see? Yike gets engaged on here. Wukong Alma gets it. Wukong W gets him away here. It's going to mean that Mirage can't quite find the engage. Quick fingers on Yike there to dissuade the engage from Nautilus. He couldn't even get the ultimate out in response. And the bot lane tier one turret as well. So LDLC using, like I say, just these laning advantages to start to generate more and more gold for themselves. This is Exekick now with the completed Mythic versus just tier two boots and the components. Oh, your son. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're slowly looking at more and more items being built up, more and more advantages being generated for Exekick. And at some point, that is going to spill over into a fight where the Callista is going to be able to take off, where the Jinx isn't going to have that power. And right now, with your biggest discrepancy being between your two ADCs, that is going to be accentuated in these team fights because the two ADCs, just in general, are stronger at different points in the game. A one item Jinx is not the same beast that a one item Callista is because one item Callista, like you mentioned, is going to be completely different and much, much stronger. So, for Exekick to have this lead right now, it's actually just super important to see LDLC continue to play around Exekick. He's even got a two level lead over Cody Sun, didn't even realize he's just dinged over to nine right now. But he's actually incredibly far ahead. And if they can keep utilizing Exekick and get him far ahead, any team fight that comes, it just has to be the focus Callista show. Yeah, completely with you. What do you think about the Immortal Shield Bow from Exekick? I, I think we spoke about it before with the Toll Point 10 changes. I was expecting to see more of a shift from the Gale Force to Kraken Slayer, for example. Is it possible that we're also seeing more of a shift towards Immortal Shield Bow sometimes? Do you agree with the uh, Immortal Shield Bow pickup here? Would you have liked to see a Kraken potentially? And I, th I think versus this composition in particular, right? There are three people that want to get in your face and dish yeah. a lot of damage out. That, that Shield Bow is going to get a lot of value. The worlds where you don't get shield bow value is when it gets popped. It is when it gets popped by things like like Zerath Q, for example, right? And then all of a sudden, there's just long range damage that just waits it out. This this front line for Mirage isn't going to be able to wait out the timing of a shield bow, and you are going to see significant value from the item choice. So I really like it. That extra kick it's certainly going to give him a lot more dueling power. And if he does find himself in a little bit of a odd position in a bit of a poor out situation oh right. ultimate gets interrupted here rakan comes out in response with the ultimate the e's are ticking down here bad luda goes very low there from an engage now, yikes around the side here w is going to mean a little bit of resistance for bad luda but first blood goes down to yike and because of an interrupted ultimate it means first blood for ldlc and potentially a top lane turret as well they might not even use to need to use the rift herald 16 minutes for first blood Rift Herald's going to go down anyway, and uh, like, they won't be able to push for two turrets if they're going to use the Herald right now. They don't have the quickness nor the Cyclone to really threaten for the second tier if they want to, you know, go particularly far forward. But given that, it is just Rangjun here who's, you know, looking to try and defend him. That charge isn't going to get stopped by Ione alone, I don't think. Yeah, he's going to be very hard-pressed to do anything here. Obviously, has the ultimate available, has E to dodge out some some of these abilities but they might even just fully commit to the tier 2 turret here and there's been no response from mirage they're more focused on this third dragon with the teleport available from ragnar i wonder if we see them challenge it it's more looking like it's going to be the case they're moving towards this mid lane turret and they're allowing this third dragon to build up very clear game plans from both sides ldlc have focused largely on getting gold on to exit kick where mento and and Mirage have focused largely on trying to get these neutral objectives. Not necessarily got that Herald, but getting those three dragons, they are set up for a very early soul. And it is a slightly dangerous game that LDLC are playing because if they lose that, that next, you know, potential dragon fight or set themselves up for a 50-50, if that flip goes the other direction, then all of a sudden they're staring down an ocean salt and all of their fighting prowess starts to become a lot harder to come by. But I think that the position that they've set themselves up for, so long as they are at the objective in time, they should never really allow Mirage to get access. There should never be a chance where this is a 50-50. And any fight that comes for LDLC at this point in the game should just be hard won. They've got Exekick on two completed items versus Cody Sun, who's just finished up one. This is a, a disparity between ADCs that is absolutely huge. And, and if there is any fight to be had, it should be LDLC just rolling over Mirage. I've just had an absolute mirage of my own in terms of dreaming. I've just realized Lilia has quite a lot of, um, well, efficiency as she goes frozen heart into Wukong as here, Galista. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, I would really like, like to see that. that pick up there. I'm just, I'm warring at the mouth almost thinking about it. 
the issue that we're going to run into is that cloth armor is likely going to be a stop it's likely going to be a zonius just because zonius is so good for lilia getting into that back line and being able to go stasis into sleep really does help out i think there's and a weird thing that's happened with lilia heart. on on 12.10 there's a weird thing where like just because of the durability and the itemization that you can go you are so unkillable that I'm... I'll, I'll be interested to see. We'll see what happens in terms of whether he does opt in for that Zonyas. I don't massively think you need it. I think you can just go tank items and be very unkillable. But a fight is unfolding here. Hook goes wide. Exekick's allowed to go aggressive now. He's on the front foot now here. Doss has the quickness available at any time. But the Mirage are going to be running away here after they can't quite find the engage. Memento goes in. Ward is found. He's going to be rattling on the doors of this mid lane turret now. Which is going to open up the map so much more. It's so difficult for any sort of engage from Mirage, right? They they have to use Depth Charge onto Exekick. But then at that point, you still have Ica, who's 205 CS, you know, 19 minutes into this game. Really looking strong for the matchup and really looking like he could well also be a carry force. There are two targets in the back line that Mirage have to try and take out. And they only have one Nautil Assault to go between the both of them. If you can get value from it and find both of them, then perfect. That's not the easiest thing to come by. Finding any sort of engage, you can see how slippery Azir, Callista, Rakan are proving to be. Because you can just, you know, use Shurima Shuffle. You can get out with the Battle Dance with any sort of knockups that the Rakan has as well. You've also got a great big Orn to try and tank the Scion engage. And if worst case comes to that, Yike can use the clone to do it. They've got so many tools to prevent the initial engagement from Mirage that any sort of fighting that happens is going to be off the back of an LDLC sort of situation where they should be benefiting. Absolutely. We're now staring down... How many minutes or so do you think it is until the... I have a really bad spatial awareness, Mr. Rudu. That is a fact. Minutes. It's about two minutes. I'll, I'll put that on your honour. This is why I don't... You know, I'm one of those people that doesn't walk around with a watch, you know? Part of, that, part of that is because I have an iPhone. But... <laughs> but... but all, right, not, all right, all right. Oh, is that a flex in, in this modern day and age? It's quite, a, you know, a general oh, no, consumer maybe. culture. It's not the most inaccessible object, is it, in the world, Rudy? But speaking of inaccessible objects, um, it's going to be that fourth dragon spawning in soon. It's a 6k gold lead. This is when you expect LDLC to focus their attentions more towards these objectives. And the objective that we see just off the screen there is DOS flashing away from a aggressive dredge line from Araxo that has been thrown out. They're circling around this Nash. How does uh, the LDLC team, and how does the Mirage team, for that fact, how do they function around this big big blue worm? Big purple worm, rather. I was going to say, that worm is not blue. Um, but... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Rangian, he's down to... Down to that. He's going to be able to do easily win this. Uh, the way that we're looking at this Baron right now is that we're in this weird position where Memento and Mirage... They will look to turn their attentions up to this Baron and say, hey, you know what? We've got three dragons. You're forced to take this soul. So we'll you know, just trade it for a Baron. But the issue is, I don't think the LDLC are too pressured. I think that even if they give over the Ocean Soul, they'd be quite happy to grab a Baron. Boss is timed quickness here. He goes in. He only finds Memento. Has to go immediately out, but Ragnar's in. Ragnar is out. And that's two key cooldowns burn for nothing in response. Really crucial timing as well. You can see that Drake spawning within the next minute. I think it's about 40 seconds when that one comes alive. Not having the quickness, not having the own horn is, like you say, really big tools that LDLC would have loved to have for this fight. Importantly, they've still got Fates Call. They can use Exekick's ulti to find that own instead of engagement. Ooh. They've also still got Cyclone. They have position here. Ragnar's going to have to do a lot on the front line in terms of stabling for his team. Exekick's here in the back, ready to turn the tie of this fight. It's all on Exekick find this Callista, then Mirage can win, but it's getting to the Callista, getting to the Azir. He's too high for carries to take, take LDLC to the win. Mike off to the side, Doss gets engaged on, Yike goes onto the back line almost immediately. Cody Sun is out, and so is Ranyun. The ultimate comes out from the side now. Yike has found Memento. Memento Mori, Dolce Decorum Est. It means the bad looter goes down. So do the chances of Mirage. Exekick's gone into him, all shield bow. Ranyun tries to find it. He can't find the Q2, and it's a massive victory for LDLC. First kills on the board. Yike goes over the wall. Yike is going to find Raxo. Yike goes on a killing spree. Screw your soul. We've taken it for ourselves. LDLC takes the advantage at the 22 minute mark. Oh, and it's the first fight here, Don Jake, and the only fight that LDLC wanted, where they get four for nothing, get the dragon. They're going to turn it to Baron as well. They are on a slight timer here. We do have Memento coming out of the base right now, but they've got Exa Kick this Baron. It's actually going to melt. Beautiful team fighting from LDLC in a gorgeous setup.
Gonna be a teleport coming out from Bad Lulu. Cody Sun right. is here as well. This could be optimistic, but sometimes you need optimism in a game like this. E for the Chompers comes out. What can Cody Sun find? He needs a reset here. LDLC are flanking and retreating at a rate of knots. Can Exekit get out here? The buffed up minions will give them the security in terms of getting out, and it is gonna be them walking away. Baron on five, nothing in response. And they burn double teleport to Rangjun and Bad Lulu now have no global presence. This opens up that 1-3-1 for LDLC if they wish to go for it. They may want to just pile down with a 4-1 strategy. It certainly makes sense with Callista and Azir. They have a lot of siege potential uh, underneath turrets. Getting rid of those two outer turrets that remain shouldn't be too difficult for them there. A pretty good spot to do so with this 10,000 gold lead that they've generated for themselves. And those, you know, turrets on the outer skirts of the map only going to add to that. Yeah, I just want to cope. We do a callback to the beginning of the game. It was a case of can Memento find the same map advantages against a jungler like Yike? The answer has come up very thin and short in that regard. Not able to find it. Dos going aggressive onto Rangyun. He, he's backwards. Not going to bear too much fruition in this bot lane. But yeah, going back to my point in general. They've not been able to enable the map state through the jungle and through finding that tempo. Yike has controlled the game from the get-go, finds a massive engage in that previous fight as well, and it means that now LDLC are knocking on the gates of Mirage, his base. Yeah, and they just take out the entire bot side jungle too. Uh, you can already see from Memento's items that he's playing on posted st uh, food stamps this game, really not getting too much gold at all. Uh, and LDLC are just ram ra ravaging the jungle, ravaging bot lane making what they want when they want. They've now got this Baron going to start knocking on the door of the base and see how much of a resistance Mirage able to put up because this is what I was talking about, right? Yes, Exekick's going to be dominating team fights, but Ica, with this two-item spike on the Azir, is also absolutely lethal under the turret. Just a Q and an auto is going to chunk people very heavily. I was actually correct. It is going to be the Frozen Heart second, but I don't know if we're even going to get to a point where he finishes the Frozen Heart. He's only about 400 gold off or so, I'd imagine, but this game could come down to a very thin margin. It's a big ulmer off to the side. Yike is in, so is the quickness. Cody Sun trying to do so much in the back line. The stasis comes out from Yike, though, and it means he's not going to be able to be found. Big Cody's resets alive. could come out now for Cody. This could be used for Cody. Yike gets an ulmer away now. It's another reset. Cody Sun has a triple kill. He's found an extra kick as well. Can he get Ragnar? It's going to be a of resistances he might just take as much as he can get here four kills in response mirage and it's a nice little burst of hope for team mirage triple kill for cody son exactly where the gold needed to go on the right target the hyper carry for this mirage team in the late game able to be set up all off the back actually of rangjun his ulti blocks all three people up inside just so much close range proximity but the rockets from cody can go massive Really good setup for the team fight memento, starting off with the sleep onto Exekick, meaning that that delayed Callista damage was enough space, enough time being bought. Have a look. You see the drowsy comes through. Exekick actually pulls it away. Look at Rangjun's ulti here. It doesn't look like it's going to do too much, but it actually clumps three members up onto one another. And Ica going in right on top of it as well, sealing his own fate, really. Cody never gets touched in that backline, just spacing beautifully. And even though we only two items on this Jinx, able to come away with the win in the team fight triple kill for him goes back to base he was sat on two long swords in his two items now has that completed lord dominic's regard how much breathing room does this grand mirage route do because i'm all for optimism we do see the orn horn being called in here it's going to be rangyun responding with that ultimate and not even a second's moment to breathe in this game as it's still gonna be the case that dos is going around the side here that quickness is almost coming up from cooldown how much hope does this buy and how much breathing room does it buy mirage because that dragon is coming up it's not necessarily the case that ldlc are building towards that soul anytime soon mirage has a little bit more time to buy get to those item spikes who do we need to look at mr rude dude yeah always looking at cody so whenever there's a jinx you go to late you go to 40 minutes you get to late game jinx will carry that's the that's the dream that's the win con it, it does give them a lot of hope here that was sort of the be all and end all of team fights. If LDLC win that team fight, they win the game. The fact that Mirage have boarded, it's renewed, it's reinvested their ability to take team fights. And if they can protect Cody, if there's not a lot of access to the backline, then there is every possibility that LDLC will fall. That Cody Sun can be the carry for this team for the fights. And if Rangjun can get another good ultimate, he's going to be at some point fairly strong. He's got those two items that make him very hard to kill. 
He's working on that third item that makes him deal a ton of damage as well. Would like to see that completed into an Infinity Edge. It could well be a Bloodthirster for a little bit more durability, but IE does stand to reason. And as soon as Cody Sun gets his Infinity Edge, it's a long ways away. It is definitely, you know, in the works, not a thing that's going to come through too quickly. But once that does happen, that's when the team fights Mirage may well just swing in their favor. Yeah, interesting adaptation that I'm not seeing too much. I don't know if it's necessarily a 12.10 thing or if it's something just because I've not seen Yorin in ages. Death Stance second onto Rang Yun means that you do delay that traditional two item spike of the Infinity Edge a bit. But it buys him a little bit more survivability in these fights and might have had something to do with him being alive for so long in that previous fight. Yeah, and it gave him that chance to find the good angle for the ultimate as well. Uh, and setting up with the durability is is obviously very nice. And I think that Rangjun here, not making a bad call at all, setting up for you know, this amount of success that we've seen. It's not going to probably, it's really not going to put him in too good a stead for, for dealing with the Orn in a side lane, I don't think. We need that eye edge to come through and... Honestly, uh, a little bit more probably before you can get away from this. Or well, not necessarily get away with, but try and take these all ones versus all. But that Baron is spawning. Uh, and Yike and Ike, Ike on the Azir going to dish out a lot of damage to this Baron. They need to find access to this pick quick with the Mirage. Ranchin's sitting in that bush now. You can tell he's looking for that teleport, but it's going to be difficult for him to find any sort of entry point. Doss and Exekick are stalling out the edge here. Exekick gets caught kick. here. He goes immediately into Zonya's here, into Stasis. He's going to get a star. It's a big flash forward from him. Well, big ultimate from Yangyun. Ornhorn comes out. Cody Sun is untouched in the back line. Can he find anything? It's a resurrection coming out here from one. It's going to be a second now as we see. And a lot of time is bought here from the Stasis of LDLC. It was a big engage, big mistake from Exekick. But he manages to get supported by the rest of his team. More time has been bought by Mirage. Very forward teleport from Ragnar. Gets Cody Sun away and they may catch him out here. They're still not going to give this Baron up. It's only the support dead. Still a lot of damage from this Mirage squad. No Fate Sealed and no Little in Lullaby. It's going to be hard. It's going to be very difficult for them to find a way. Exa Kick finds the engage into Memento now. Doss is going to get chunked out almost immediately. He's gone very low. Memento goes down. That's I a Memento of a pass. All gone here. It's going to be a double kill for the Azir. Exa Kick makes a mistake on an aura attack. But that is not a mistake. It's a triple kill. Or Ike is going to seal the deal in this game. It means at least a double inhibitor. They might be moving on towards the Nexus. And just when it looked good for Mirage, you look at it, it's just a, it's an illusion all along. LDLC continue their dominating fashion from week one. They find, after one mistake in a team fight, they find the dominating team fight. They get those cooldowns out. They show that discipline. And they're going to be moving towards the victory here. Ornhorn just to cement the deal. Beautiful stuff just when Mirage think that they've got a window to go back when they think they can get back into the fight LDLC pull out their trap card they've got extra kicks ult still ready to go enough to start a re-engage enough to set up for a second fight and the one that crucially ends them the game they don't even take the Baron in the end they just march it through mid lane and say we have won the match a gorgeous game and LDLC come away as your victors they were shaky a little bit toward the end but they found that team fight that was so desperately needed absolutely and i mean if you're an LDLC fan you were maybe a little